Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast today. Thanks for listening. You are listening to the Tract and Truth Tuesday edition for Bible Tract Echoes. Now, every day we study the Word of God together, and in recent days, we're actually studying through the book of Leviticus, believe it or not, but it's Tuesday. And on our Tuesday broadcast, we set our Bible study, typical Bible study, aside and just try to encourage one another in the whole work of telling the gospel, the good news of salvation to those who are not yet born again by the saving grace of God. I've got a gospel tract in my hand. I've got my Bible open to the gospel of John chapter 20 to some verses here that if you do not have them highlighted or underlined in your Bible, I would strongly encourage you to do that. If you can get your Bible open, John chapter 20 verses 30 and 31. I have a question question for you. The question is this, on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate yourself as a person who can tell the gospel to a stranger? Now, many people tell me the biggest hurdle they have in telling the gospel to a stranger is just finding a way to get into the gospel. Well, that would be all incorporated in the big picture of how you would rate yourself. So again, I ask, on a scale of 1 to 10, where 1 is low and 10 is high, how would you rate yourself as one who can communicate the gospel to a stranger? Now, let me encourage you today with a story of a man named Ray. I heard about Ray through a man who he taught himself, Ray taught this man how to do personal evangelism. And when Ray started showing this other man how to witness, Ray was horrible at it himself. But I, I'm going to save the rest of that story for just a couple of minutes. You're going to enjoy that story. So if you can right now, get your Bible open to John chapter 20. It's Tracked in Truth Tuesday. Let's encourage each other in the work of the gospel. One of the greatest ways to do gospel work is by using gospel tracks. As my announcers already said, Bible Tract Echoes is the radio arm of a larger ministry, which has for 80 years, yes, 80 years, we've been publishing gospel tracts. And a gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. The particular gospel tract in my hand right now is one we've been doing a long, long time. It's entitled, What God Wants Everyone to Know. What God Wants Everyone to Know. It is a tremendous first touch track. And by first touch, I simply mean if you're meeting people and you have no clue about whether they have any Bible background, church background at all, here is a great way to begin. It starts at the very foundational thing. It's entitled, again, What God Wants Everyone to Know. It asks the question, who is God? Gives an answer. Where did we come from? Gives an answer. Where did Adam and Eve live? Gives an answer. It goes up through, it finally gets to this question. How can you go to heaven? And it gives a clear gospel answer. The word of God is used here because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This is a track, by the way, that many local churches use in their welcome packet when they come to visit their churches on a particular Sunday. Now, friend, here's a, just a great tool. You need this tool. What God wants everyone to know. It's clear. It's simple. It's beautifully done. Let me send it to you, please. I want to send this to you along with a sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracts. To do that, you need to give me your name and your mailing address. At the end of the program, my announcer will tell you how to give that to us. So have pen and paper ready. 
And you can just simply, though, go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. Bible Tracks, that word tracks is spelled T R A C T S, BibleTracksInc.org. If your Bible's open, John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31 says this, and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book in the Gospel of John. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Now, just ponder that a minute. The Gospel of John is a book, is a gospel written for evangelism. That God gave us such a book ought to cause us to ask why. Why did God give us a book that is designed for evangelism? Perhaps he wants us to do evangelism. But then ponder this, that when we come to know Christ as Savior, God indwells us with the Holy Spirit and a key purpose of the Holy Spirit to give us the power to do, guess what? Evangelism. You and I need to be involved in evangelism. I talked about the story of Ray I learned about Ray from another pastor whose last name is Smith, like mine, and here's what he wrote. I'm quoting now. Within weeks of my conversion, this is Pastor Smith's conversion, within weeks of my conversion, I was taken under the wing by a man I had tormented at work before I got saved. We all derided him as the, quote unquote, the preacher. But after my salvation, Ray took me with him on evangelistic house calls, visiting people who had shown some interest in the gospel. Now, Ray had graduated from high school seemingly with a degree in football, and for all practical purposes, he couldn't read. But he learned to read the King James Version out loud to his wife while her Bible was open on the drain board as she did the dishes. I love this lady. I'm continuing to read here. He, Ray, taught me everything you shouldn't do in evangelism by doing the wrong things. He coldly started as a monologue without establishing any kind of personal interest. He sped through the Bible, leaving his hearers in the dust, and he got angry when they couldn't follow him. I noted his obvious lack of fruit, but I was ignorant, so I just kept going with him on his evangelistic calls. Well, you know what? I'm still reading now. You know what? Ray got better. He persisted so that he became winsome. His aggressive behavior became compassionate, and later, while I was away at Bible school, he, Ray, contracted ALS. His throat became paralyzed and he couldn't talk. His bed was moved to the living room where he could correct Bible lessons that he was mailing to kids to evangelize and teach them. Later on, Ray gave me his winter coat. He knew he would never wear it again. To me, that coat felt like Elijah's mantle. He wasn't good at evangelism at first, but heaven is populated with those who are there because he didn't quit. It's just no excuse. You'll never get better if you don't do it, end quote. What a great story. I love guys like Ray. When I was a boy back in the 1950s, my church and most other Bible preaching churches had an urgent theme in their services and that Christ wants to make believers fishers of men. Jesus has not called all of us to be pastors or deacons. And by the way, both pastors and deacons must meet a set of qualifications, and these qualifications are not optional. But Jesus called us to be gospel tellers and gospel witnesses, but you'll never find a set of requirements and qualifications for that. The only thing needed to be a gospel witness is for you and I to be a follower of Jesus. Jesus, because Jesus said, follow me, and I'm going to make you fishers of men. Recently, in an article about evangelism, the writer reminded people of this old proverb. The proverb says this, I'm quoting, delegating a task to everybody seems like delegating that task to nobody. Let me say that again. Delegating a task to everybody seems like delegating the task to to nobody. Have you ever heard that before? Do you understand what it's saying? What this old proverb means is this. When a task is given to everybody, 
it's given in a general open call and saying, we need to get this done, people often think that, well, somebody else will get it done, so I don't have to do it. I don't have to worry about it. And it's been my experience, friend, that that's pretty much typical among Bible believers today when it comes to the call of doing personal evangelism. Think about this for a moment. Almost every religion in the world can be practiced pretty much to its fullest behind closed doors. They don't need to go any place. They can go to their worship house or their meeting place and they can burn their incense or do whatever they do. But almost every religion in the world can be practiced to its fullest behind closed doors. But Christianity cannot. The love of Christ constrained him to leave where he was and go to where lost people are. That's the caliber of love he used to draw you and me to salvation. That's the caliber of love that believers receive at salvation, and that's the caliber of love the Holy Spirit is developing in us as we grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, beloved, Christianity cannot be fully practiced behind the closed doors of our church buildings, and Christianity cannot be fully practiced by us just going out and bringing people inside the building. We must be moved by God's great love and us going to lost people like Jesus did. We've been called to be people who go into the world with the gospel. My point today is this. Born-again people are not told to get qualified to tell the gospel. They're just simply told to go tell the gospel. That word gospel means good news. Perhaps you're listening today. You've heard the term gospel many, many times. The gospel is good news. It's good news for this reason. You are as a person, you as a person, you've committed sin and your sin has made you an enemy of God. Now that part's not good news, but sometimes you don't know news is good until you know why you need it. You are a sinner and your sin has created a spiritual condition. You are dead in your trespasses and sins. And that's the way you will end your life. Your physical life will end. Your eternal life, your spiritual life will go on forever. And you're going to spend your eternal life either in heaven or in hell. If you are right now spiritually dead in your sin because you have sinned, you're on your way to hell. But the good news is this. God loves you. He loves you to the extent he sent his only pure, eternal son of God to take on flesh, to become Jesus, that he might live his life perfectly because God is perfect. Bear your sins to Calvary. That's why he died there. He died to be your substitute, to pay your sin debt, that you through him can be saved. How do you receive that gift? You believe on him. You trust him. You throw the weight of your eternal destiny onto him. You give him your life and say, Jesus, I'm on my way to hell. I don't want to go there. I want to be saved from sin, death, and hell. I want you to deal with my sin. Take it away. Give me eternal life. And you will. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.